I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. What's going on, everybody? To all my brothers and sisters around the world, God bless you on this beautiful Friday as we thank God for so much. Now we're going back to Psalms 37. What happens to the righteous people? And God bless everybody that's been keeping up as we've been doing Psalms 37. In the first video, we talked about how to wait on God. And then we talked about the end of godless people. And then we talked about how God helps the righteous people. So what we want to do now is close out with this video and talk about what happens to the righteous people. Psalms 37. Now we go on to verses 32 through 40. What happens to the righteous people. And it says in verse 32, The wicked watch it, the righteous, and seek it to slay him. Now once again, it's just my belief. You know, I believe this is King David, you know, dealing with this right here because oftentimes David was mad because the wicked was prospering. And David knew how it was to be on the run from his enemies. And it says the wicked watches the righteous and seek it to slay him. And we all know how many times that Saul tried to kill David. And not only was it Saul, but even his own son you know, tried to kill him. David was oftentimes on the run, but David meditated on God. And it, it makes you want to say this. Somebody is always watching you. Somebody is always watching what you do. And remember that your haters are always watching what you do. And even some people want you dead. Look at David. You know, even look at Joseph, his own brothers. They even thought about killing him, but if it wasn't for his older brother Reuben saving him, coming back to say he's going to get him later, ain't no telling what they would have done to Joseph. So oftentimes your own fam family can be out to kill you. He, he just pretty much saying a godless man watches a righteous man in everything they do. Why do you think your haters know what you do all the time? And verse 33 says, The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. The Lord will not let him remain in his hand. He will not say that he is wrong when people are saying that he is wrong. How many of y'all know when you are right, according to scripture and everything, and then somebody still want to tell you you wrong, you ain't right? And you haven't even done nothing to some people, and they still want to just come at you, say you wrong. Some people just don't even like you because the way you look. They don't like you because the way you talk. They don't like you because the way you dress. Wicked people don't never have nothing good to say about nobody, really. Haters don't never have nothing good to say about nobody. It's a lot of them on YouTube. It's a lot of them on my channel, and I hope they listen. I always got a word for the haters. So the Lord will not let the righteous man remain in the hand of the godless man. Y'all understand that in verse 33. Let's move on to verse 34. It says, wait. There go that word wait again. Wait on the Lord and keep his way. And he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. And the wicked are cut off. Thou shalt see it. In other words, what, what David is saying in verse 34. And I believe this is David once again. Is stay with the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Do things God's way. He will never leave you, never forsake you. You trust in God. And remember, we're talking about Israel, but we can also fast forward to now and talk about us too. He, he was telling them that the land will be yours. You will inherit the land. He was talking to the Jews. Do right. You will inherit the land. And the wicked going to be cut off. See, David was angry at first that the wicked. Y'all remember we read that in verses 1 through 11. Of the same book of Psalms 37. He was angry because he, he was mad that God wasn't wiping out the wicked. So he comes back later on and here and say, Y'all, we just got to hold on. Stay with the Lord. This land is going to be ours. Just like we are promised to live with the Father. And have eternal life. And the wicked going to be cut off. Verse 35 says, I have seen the wicked in great power. And spreading themselves like a green bay tree. 
David, like once again, looked like the wicked was always prospering. Oh, look like they had so much power. Oh, but in the long run, they're going to be silent. They, once again, back back up to verse 34, it tell you that the wicked will be cut off. It's just like we see a lot of wicked people right now. They got money. They got power. Look like they ruling up everything. But on judgment day, when it's time to decide, hmm, I ain't talking about us decide. When the Lord, when the Lord say who's going where, ain't going to be no more chances. And if you're getting thrown in the lake of fire, it ain't no way out of that. God won't even help you. It's over. The second death, ain't no more chances. So just look like they have great power. And then let's look at what David said in verse 36. He says, Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yeah, I saw him, but he could not be found. They will be cast away forever. It's going to be a beautiful time. Can we just think for a second in our mind about the wicked being gone? Notice David talked about this so much. He kept on mentoring them, talking about the wicked. To never see the wicked again and be in peace and love, joy, no hate, no jealousy, no envy. Can, oh, can we even imagine that in our mind right now? Think about it. Your own family members won't even be able to hate on you no more. Everybody going to have love. Everybody going to be pretty much the same age. Your body won't even be sick. Can't get sick. You can't even die. We don't even know when to shout, do we? Oh, let the church say amen. Verse 37 says, Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. All the people who are right with the Lord. I'm talking about man and woman. If you are right with the Lord, oh, look at how David talked about, for your end is going to be peace. So much peace. That's amazing, y'all. Verse 38 says, But, uh-oh, the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. There you go again. He's steady talking about the wicked and they end is what? Destruction. Lake of fires for the, for the wicked. He say the transgressors shall be destroyed together. So then let me know all these folks walking around him that's got all this wicked going on, wickedness, hatred. Don't never want to see nobody do good. All this murdering and killing and you just name it, that's wicked, this stuff. They're not going to have no peace at all. They end is, dest is destruction and they're going to be cut off. But 39 says, but the salvation of the righteous, hallelujah, is of the Lord. He is their strength. In the time of trouble. This is why we got to quit walking around here talking about, I don't want to go through nothing. Verse 39 said, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in their time of trouble. I don't know about y'all, but everything I done went through in my little bitty life, God ain't never left me. When I was convicted of rape, aggravated sexual assault, God was my lawyer. He got me off. Because he knew his child was innocent. When I was sick, he was my healer. He was my doctor. He brought me through sickness. He's never left me. So when my enemy comes up against me, why in the world do I want to escape from my enemy? When he has provided a way for me to deal with my enemy. By doing what? I got a sword right here. My Bible. I deal with the enemy just like Jesus dealt with the enemy. He dealt with the devil out there in the wilderness. When Satan was trying to change up the word, Jesus put him in his place. I put my enemy right in the place with his word. I use my word right here. I pray. I praise. I worship. Oh, yes. And when I put all of that together, next thing I know, my enemy running down the street somewhere. They move around. They come back. But they move around, they come back, that's Satan's job. They keep coming back because they're doing their job. See, if the enemy wasn't doing their job, they wouldn't be messing with you at all. And if you don't have nobody messing with you right now, if you don't have nobody hating on you right now, if you don't have nobody up against you right now, my brothers and sisters, you must be on the enemy's side. 
understand that if you are a child of God, you ought to have more haters than anybody right now. Oh, but verse 39 again says, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in a time of trouble. My brothers and sisters, we got a lot more trouble coming ahead of us. Oh, yes. Verse 40 says, and the Lord shall help him and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Psalms 30, uh, yeah, 37 Verses 32 through 40, may the Lord add a blessing to the readers and the hearers or the doers and the doers, excuse me, of his holy word. See, go back to David time. In this time of David, this meant that God would keep them safe on earth. Just as he done Noah, just as he provided for Israel, just as he done for Lot and his family. He kept them safe on earth. And David recognized that. See, a lot of us don't want to be safe on earth. We want to get an escape route just to be safe. He kept them safe on earth. That means a lot. And I'm going to say something else off the wall. It means that God will keep them safe even when they die. Why? Because it ain't really no death in Christ. When you, when you get into that glorified body, oh, you're safe for the rest of your eternal life. You will never have to worry about nothing again. Who is the righteous man or the righteous woman? Somebody that follows the Lord, that trusts in the Lord, that have their faith in the Lord, and they living and doing the Lord's will. That's who the righteous is. See, a lot of people don't understand why David was still considered righteous, even when he messed up. See, there is none that's perfect. And just my little old two cents, my little opinion, when I think about perfect being, according to the Bible, perfect just simply means being mature. Mature because you can't be perfect, but you can perfect what you do. There's no way we should be walking around here still living the same way we used to live. We must believe in God, trust God. Now I want to mention four things as I close out right here. When we look at the meaning of this song, and then we look at the meaning of the teachings that Jesus taught, when you just look at four things, let's just say on this side, the meaning of this song, because we only went through the whole chapter now, and then on this side, the meaning of what Jesus taught. First thing I want to talk about is the land, where the Jews lived at. When you read Psalms and go back to the Jews, the land was always important. Jerusalem. The holy city has always been in, it's been important, y'all. So the land is what you saw in these scriptures, and then even in the scriptures before this video. And then when you look at the meaning of what Jesus taught, the kingdom of God, where all his children will live eternally, which will be on earth, that new holy city. So even in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, you still see that land. And then you look at the word righteous. Mm. Righteous. You had some Jews that really was trying to obey God back then. They was considered righteous. And you look at what Jesus taught. People who believe in him, Christians, us, the saints, are pretty much considered righteous. Even though some of us we just don't look Christ-like at all walking around and talking about we Christians. Those are the so-called Christians. So that's the third, uh, the second thing we're looking at is the righteous. And the third thing we want to look at is the inheritance. What Jews thought their children would get when their parents died. Well, when you look at the inheritance, then you fast forward to the New Testament on what Jesus taught. That's why he mentioned crowns. What you're going to get when you pass on. It is about your works also in the long run because according to how you work, that determines what kind of rewards you're going to get in the kingdom. So in the fourth thing we want to look at as we close is godless people. People that don't obey God. Wicked folks. That was the meaning of this psalms. And then we look on the fast forward to what Jesus taught. People who went against God. He told us in Matthew Seven, those on that day saying, Lord, Lord, didn't we not cast out demons? Didn't we not prophesy in our name? He's going to say, depart from me, 
I never knew you, ye that work iniquity. A lot of people don't catch that chapter uh, 7 of Matthew. Who did that sound like? Who claimed to be prophets and going to church and teaching and speaking in his name? And he going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. That sounds like a lot of prophets, a lot of preachers. It could be a lot of Sunday school teachers. It could be a lot of musicians. It could be a lot of deacons. It could be a whole lot of people that's going to church. It's going to be a whole lot of people that's going to church. I'm not going to make it in the kingdom. God bless you. God keep you. Lord, I say the same. See you on the next one. Peace.